This apple variety here is the Bramley apple. It's a very well-known uh, cultivar and it's a very well-known processing cultivar especially. It has a very unique blend of acidity and astringency and it's much loved in apple pies and so on. So this is the basis, if you like, for some of the products that we're actually making. The type of thing we're doing from this is we're making purees from it and we're making wedge products with nutraceuticals and these are going to turn out as ready desserts, uh, pre-packed pre and processed uh, ready desserts. So we dip the apple slices in Nature Seal, which is an anti-browning inhibitor. They're removed from that then and they're drained and then they are put into the pre-packs. Apples themselves are inherently functional, but we add additional ingredients uh, to them, such as the probiotic, or the prebiotic, or the alkyl calcium, and we call these Apple Plus Plus products. In these products, the skin is normally left on, the yes, apple skin, because that is the richest source of antioxidants and, and, and polyphenols in, in the apple. They're normally stored in, in chill for up to 10 days. We look at them on day zero, uh, and on day five, and on day 10. And we would do quite a range of tests. Uh, we would do uh, soluble solids, the sweetness. We would look at the acidity. We would look at the pH of the, of the pulp of the, of the apple. Uh, we look at the color. The color we would measure would not be the skin color, but the internal color of, of the slice to see how well the browning agent or the anti-browning agent is, is performing. So color would be a very, very important factor. We would also put them through another machine called the shear press, which we can have a look at later, that measures the texture of these products and gives us the, the chewiness. And then last but not least, they would proceed then to the sensory panel where a, a taste panel would be conducted on, 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 on the samples. One of the major tests we conduct on our products is texture. For products like wedges, we use two different types of instruments. We may use a mis machine such as this, as, which is called a shear press, and this measures the texture of a bulk sample, say of 100 grams of apple wedges at the one time, and it mimics the chewing action of the human teeth. So the apples are in here and they're resisting. The force is up here and it pushes down and you get a printout of your reading. This is another texture machine that we use for texture measurements in addition to the shear press which you've already seen. You can take uh, one piece of apple uh, like this and you can take a, a small little cylinder from the apple and then it's placed in under this uh, device here and this will come down. And the machine then interprets the texture and converts it to, translates it to the computer and it measures a whole range of parameters. I suppose the most important uh, aspect would be that the fruit remains firm. For processors, that's very important. This test would be very applicable to them. Um, they would need to know if the fruit is in good condition so that when it comes to the consumer, that they have a good sensory experience. Well, we're now in the sensory testing unit at Ashtown Food Centre and our eyes of fruit uh, products, they all end up here uh, at some stage because we look at them with a range of sensory tests and this is, uh, I suppose it's one of the final tests in that it's what the consumer uh, might feel about them. We normally look for about 60 responses. Normally we would never present more than four or five samples at a time we use a simple system of a six centimeter line and we ask the panelists to score uh, the six centimeter line zero is unacceptable and six is very acceptable so we ask the panelists to mark on the line where they think a particular sample lies and then underneath to make some comments as to why they think it lies there afterwards then we come along and we literally measure the length of them on the mark with a ruler on the six centimeter line it's very hard to get a 5.8 that would be a rarity because in, in a panel of a number of people uh, no one will ever score that highly in fact panelists tend to use the middle of the scale rather than go to one extreme or the other the products we've produced here people seem to like them quite well we have some products which we would we reckon will be commercially uh, suit, suitable for commercial uh, production and as you know that the main functional foods, well, a lot of functional food products now are dairy based and the dairy people have brought this to a fine art 
But now we are going the other way. We are going to have ones that are fruit based with perhaps no dairy at all. So we are approaching it from the other the other side, if you like. But also, uh, I guess consumers uh, in many countries now are very familiar with functional foods. It's something they hear quite often. They hear antioxidants often. They hear many of these terms often. So when these products hit the marketplace, which I hope they will, I don't think the consumer will find them off-putting. There are many ready meals, but not so many ready desserts, and this is why we're going down this route.